guest today, my second for my second episode of this show, is none other than Travel with Clem. Thank you so much, Clem, for being part of this today. I am so happy and I'm so glad that this is about Dominica because Dominica has been on my list in forever. And I came oh this God. close last time. <laughs> this close. It hurts so I know, bad. I know. And thank you so much for doing this, Raisa. I think this is such an amazing um, you know, initiative. Um, you know, to be able to travel virtually because right now, I mean, yeah. we can go places, but it doesn't mean that we can plan our trips or when we're ready to go out, right? Exactly. <laughs> so that's exactly the point of this whole show is to kind of like give an insight for those who are thinking about adding Dominica to their travel list. What all can they do? What can they prepare for? What should they prepare for? Uh, you know, just so they kind of like have a uh, have an idea of what to expect once they land. Before we start talking about the Nature Island, uh, mm -hmm. let us first talk about you, because you have yes. your brand online, which is Travel mm -hmm. with Clem, and you're yes. a travel blogger, you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, a freelancer. Uh, you know, I'm just... <laughs> oh my God, I, know. I don't know how to do it. I'm just... And, and yes. Yes. you're an MD. Yes. A possible doctor. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. It's like maybe you should like scratch that and put one. Yeah. I know. <laughs> How flattering. But yes, yes. All these things, you know, I, I am all these things. And, you know, the way I live my life is a reminder to myself and to everybody else that I get the opportunity to inspire that you can be anything or anyone you want to be. You can do the things that you love, um, the things that pay the bills and also the things that fuel you know, your life. So for me, medicine has always been that thing. From the time I was a kid, I knew I had to be a doctor. There was just no other way. There was just no other thing that I could do. Um, along the way, I also fell in love with traveling. And it all started when um, I um, took my first trip to Germany when I was, I can't remember how old I was, but I was still in high school. Um, and to me, that was the best trip of my life. You know, after that experience in Germany, I started traveling like really when I was in medical school and that was by looking for conferences, looking for opportunities, not just to develop myself, but to also explore other cultures, you know, other countries and so forth. Cause that fire, it just never left me, you know? So yeah, I was like, once one... you start traveling, that's it. You got to travel it. blog, travel <laughs> blog and you can't get rid of it. And what started as an innocent advice, you know, for me to my friends or to other people who just watch my pictures and stories, you know, um, turned up being this massive travel blog where now I teach people who are busy professionals, how they can include more adventure in their life without having to quit their full-time job, without having to sacrifice the other thing that they love. You were born and raised on Dominica? No, actually, interesting story. Always interesting stories. Um, I was born and raised in Cameroon, which is a country in Central Africa, but also considered West Africa, depending on how you look at it, really. Um, and I traveled to Dominica to study medicine and, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> you fell in love with that too, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. There is just something about the islands that just, like, you, you just can't, I don't know, once you've lived here, it's, I can't explain it. You just have to come visit and then you'll yeah. see for yourself. Okay, so let's dive right into it. You yep. have started in this pandemic. How is this pandemic treating you and how are you treating your travel bug? And, you know, what are you doing to kind of like uh -huh. calm your itchy feet, you know? <laughs> Well, I feel I'm, I'm a firm proponent of the idea that, you know, challenges mold you. And at the beginning of the pandemic, pandemic, sorry, I mean, it was hard. You know, we we initially, for me, the way um, to to let go of all the frustration and the stress was to reconnect with nature, you know, um, go on, you know, travel adventures around the island. But then at, at a certain point, it stopped that because, you know, you have to physical distance and so forth. So it became really hard, not just from a travel perspective and the fact that it's therapeutic, but also from a financial perspective, um, because a lot of businesses were shut down, um, seeing some friends lose their jobs and also in some extent seeing people, you know, that were close to me lose their income. You know, it, it was a hard thing. But um right now, um country or society was why, sorry, the, the, the island is one of the best who um to have been able to actually manage the cases of COVID or throughout, you know, the screaming processes you know, solid tight, people are putting quarantine when they come and visit. So we are actually kind of like proud that, you know, we are able to keep this under control um, so much so that we allow visitors to come in, um, you know, regularly. In terms of, of, of tourism, I mean, it has been affected everywhere. And, you know, the tourism has um, 
shifted tremendously. But for me, it became an opportunity to actually, like I, I like to say, go back home and focus on really what the island has to offer. Um, I started doing um, 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 travel home series here in Dominica, where I would go to different places, go to different hotels, go to different sites, do different adventures, just to to show people that you know you don't even need to go so far and the pandemic kind of like um propelled it because i was already on that momentum so i just felt like you know what since we can't go anywhere anyways let me show you more of what we can do here you know by just putting myself out there i was able to work with the tourism board discover dominica i think it's on one of the things that you were going to ask me about <laughs> Lam, i yeah. so enjoy those videos mm -hmm. those videos yeah. are amazing if you guys have not seen it yet go to the discover dominica authority uh link. yes i'm gonna link it down below because you guys yeah. have to see all these videos that you have done with the with the dominican authority it is amazing and you know what yes. i love that you did is that every single episode you link up with another with somebody known uh, in dominica whether it's an mm -hmm. artist a local artist uh and or or anybody else i think your cousin, mm -hmm. is it your cousin you call her your cousin I really yes. enjoyed that episode because she, yes. I, and I fell in love with her music and oh, now you I have it on a repeat in my Oh house. my God. Oh my God. When, when I told her that she was so excited, the funny thing is actually, Raizel, she's my sister, you know? What? Yeah, she's my sister. So she is like the princess, the Afrobeat princess from the Caribbean, right? But so that's wait, I have to stop you just for one second because she also is a doctor. Yes, she also is a doctor. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how you do it. Oh, I see my sister. Oh, I see the finger. Oh, I see the color. The color of perfection. But listen, so let's dive into this Dominica stuff. So right now, yes. to be yes. able to visit Dominica is a little hard because I've been doing my research, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that, unfortunately, St. Martin, where I am based, is... Uh, mm -hmm. is part of the high risk countries. So it yes. comes with a lot of things that we'll need to do to be able mm -hmm. to spend time in Dominica, which, you know, we have to be careful. But I mean, Dominica is being seriously, seriously careful. And I really appreciate yeah. seeing that. But what I love about this is that there is still this opportunity because now the Discover Dominica Authority has come up with this uh, Safe in Nature program, which, yes. you know, the name alone, they mm -hmm. should keep it for the rest of yes you know of eternity because it's such a great name safe mm -hmm. in nature, in nature then, yes, you know you yes. do your quarantine and then there's mm -hmm. these safe in nature places you can stay at and yes. you can stay in those places quarantine in those places and mm -hmm. still do some trails adventures, and adventures yes, yes, around yes. what they call yes. their bubble and I, just, I would just add to what you were saying Raizel, that the safe in nature properties they actually covid certified which means that they follow the training, they do the protocol and the procedures yeah. to make sure that they keep the visitors safe, but they also keep the locals safe. And uh, to go along with what you were saying, um, some of the properties that I featured in my, my project, we discovered Dominica, what we did in addition to featuring the properties and the local artists, we also featured things that you can do around. Some yeah. of those places that you that you have featured in this video mm -hmm. have trails that actually start right from the property of the hotel. Exactly. Which is exactly. amazing. You yeah. can be at a waterfall, for instance, <laughs> in a couple of minutes hike yep. from your mm -hmm. hotel room. That's amazing. Okay, so listen, I have to ask you, a lot of people, when they mm -hmm. think about Dominica, of course, they think nature. Yes. But everybody then thinks waterfalls, hiking, mm -hmm. you have the sulfur baths and all of those crazy, beautiful things. But mm -hmm. nobody thinks about the beaches of Dominica. And, and to be I know, right? honest, I mm -hmm. did not know that such beautiful beaches existed. Yes. Which one is your favorite beach? Okay, before I answer that question... Uh, I just want to explain to you, um, and I, I think you're probably aware of this, right? Like different I Caribbean islands have different things to offer. And generally when people yeah. think of the Caribbean, they think we have this fixed idea that it's just white sand beaches. And that is one of the reasons why Dominica's beaches are not so much advertised because they are not white sand. Because it's a volcanic island, instead of white sand beaches, we actually have black sand beaches. So um, they offer a different vibe, different, mm -hmm. thera different therapeutic effect, you know, um, different level of relaxation and and, you know, like and, you different, know and a different underwater world as well, I can imagine. Exactly. You guys have exactly. actual whales. Mm -hmm. You can do yes. whale watching in Dominica. You can do whale right? watching, yes. Yeah. Girl, the first, time, the first time I went whale watching, when I was doing my adventures, I think that was like, was it last year or two years ago? 
Rizel, I saw 17 whales. I was what? flabbergasted. I'm telling you, like 17 whales in the Caribbean. 17 whales. This and, is amazing. <laughs> and the thing is that when you do whale watching, you don't like you don't know what's gonna happen. Like it's it's, it's like if the whales decide to come out, like okay, we are out. If they decide not to come out, well, too bad. But that was yeah. my first time, and I saw seventeen whales. And those are things that a lot of people don't know. Dominica is really not about only hiking. Everybody thinks hiking. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. nobody, everybody forgets about the beaches. But like you said, um, I think it's Rosalie Bay is yes. one of the, um, places also for turtle nesting. Yes, turtle nesting. Um, they also come at different seasons um, throughout the year, but it's a huge, huge, huge thing. So I have two, or I don't know if it's possible to have two, but there are two beaches yeah. that I really, really love. Uh, one of them, the first one is Purple Turtle, and it's in the second city, which is Portsmouth. Portsmouth was the capital before Roseau became the capital. And um, I love that beach because it's really huge, and um, it brings back a lot of memories. And then the other one is Mero Beach, I actually wrote about it in one of my blog posts and I love it because it's so close to the city, to Roseau, the main city, like about 20 minutes drive. And you spoke about one of my sister's songs, Marie Pascal Music. Yeah, is that, I was just going to ask you, which one was that on? That's yeah, so Mirror. That, that was on Mirror Beach, yes. Okay. I never asked for no money. Mero Beach. Okay. Yes. All right. Beautiful. So now um, we were just talking. Tell me something. The beaches on Dominica, the ones that are um, where the hotels are built, uh, are your beaches all private or are they public? Public. Public. Beautiful. So there even is, the beaches yes. at the hotels, you can still access those. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now since we're on the topic of water, what is your favorite waterfall? <laughs> Do you know how <laughs> okay. many waterfalls there are in total in Dominica? You know, I'm working on that project. So maybe by the end of the year, I'll be able to answer. <laughs> but there are many. <laughs> yes, many, many, many. All right. So my favorite is definitely going to be Spani Falls. Um, Spani Waterfall. It spells S-P-A-N-N-O-I. And the reason why I love the waterfalls, okay, don't judge me, but uh, one of the reasons why I love it is because uh, first, there is a short hike. So, you know, I wouldn't even oh, call it a hike, I, like a short I, walk. I'm with you. It's like a short yeah. walk, I'm in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing is, right, sometimes you want to go to the waterfalls and you want to sweat before you go there, right? But some other times you just want to go and lace. And you, you don't really want to work for it. So, yeah, <laughs> so, so there's just like a short walk to the waterfall. So you take about like five to seven minutes and you're there. And then when you get there, there's like a, a little deck where you can rest. Um, you can you can sit down, you can have drinks with your friends, you can take pictures, and it's really, really beautiful. But the second favorite that you've actually asked is called Trafalgar Waterfalls. And just for people who you might be wondering where the name comes in, it comes from like Dominica's history. It was a war that was called or a battle, the Trafalgar battle in that area. I love it because again, it's not too it's not far from the city. And again, if you want to escape and still feel um, you know, part of the city, like Feel like not too far it's perfect the other reason why i love it is because when you get there there's a little hike of stone so you have to kind of like do stone climbing carefully with a guide and then when you get there there is a part where you have cold water and then there's a part where you have hot water and that is coming from like the under you know sulfur kind of like volcanic vibes that the water forgets so another thing that is so impressive about dominica is also that you have uh, you still have a tribe of indigenous people that yes. actually live there. So you guys still have the Kalinago tribe is yes. still active, still doing yes. a traditional. Uh, Very much so. They're still having a traditional lifestyle and mm -hmm. they have opened it up and share it with visitors well right now actually i mean we they are still very active as you mentioned and they so much so that the government has actually made active efforts to make sure that they are included in cultural celebrations and you know everything else that the non-minority sorry are included in included in so um in around september there is something that we call the kalinago week where or Kal i think it's either kalinago month or week i have to double check but they have a series of events where you know we just have like a huge emphasis on their craft 
their history, um, their culture, their food, their ways of living and things like that. So it's really a huge opportunity for people to get to know them more and see how they contribute to the heritage of the island. You know, we I write for a magazine called Melange Magazine, uh, Travel mm-hmm. and Island Lifestyle. And we- I like how you say that in French, by the way, Melange Magazine. Melange. Well, it is Melange, it's not yes. Melange or whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I write for Melange and we just did our current issue actually has the chief of the Kalinago on the cover. Wow. And then, okay. so I'll put a link below also that you guys can then read all, everything about it because it's actually almost the whole magazine is dedicated to the amazing. Kalinago tribe. Which is, amazing. And I learned so much about the tribe. I cannot wait to visit when it's safe to visit, of course. Yes. Um, it's the youngest chief ever of the mm-hmm. tribe currently he's still in his 20s for sure i think he's still in his early 20s but i wouldn't tell you be able to tell you exactly how old he is <laughs> all right so before i let you go clam because you're a very very busy busy woman i wanted to ask you what is your favorite thing to do in dominica that is mm. not exactly known with tourists three things that i love doing um one of them is bush rum tasting and i'm going to tell you why um, in African, you know, culture and so forth, we believe a lot in like herbal medicine and bush medicine. And I think that that is one of the things that the Caribbean culture is also perpetrating, which is beautiful. And so bush rums are part of the cultural heritage in a way. And I like it because I, I feel like it shows me the creativity behind people making different rums out of literally any her you know so i love doing that the other thing that i love doing is discovering new rivers now you know that in dominica we you know we are very much about like water and you know hiking and stuff but rivers are not really really marketed and advertised to tourists just because again we still have that you know caribbean mindset of like beaches 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 but you know, and I was never really a fond of rivers until I really started to do what my other local friends were doing and they are really huge at rivers. So I love discovering new rivers because you can just see how they are actually continuous with each other and they are continuous with the waterfalls. And then every river kind of like has a history. And whenever I go to a new river, I get to talk to the people around or the people who live there to tell me exactly which part of the history does this river fall into so that is another series that i'm going to launch at some point you know dominica's rivers so that's that's the second thing and the third thing that i love doing um is finding new little um you know airbnbs or hotels for amazing staycations yes now i i actually started doing that um you know i mean it was magnified because of the pandemic and so forth uh, with the discover dominica project what i did was we we used we highlighted a lot of you know known and less commonly known accommodations that offer segregation and so forth. But then it kind of like sparked something in me because there are so many others, you know, that are not so popular and, and you know, they also have things to offer. Uh, what about food in Dominica? Dominica has some really, really good food. And what I love about it is that it's all nature it's it's natural it's right yes. right from the earth right there yes yes the culinary scene yeah the culinary scene is really really exciting and really interesting now the food influences come of course from african influences european american and um you know we have more and more if more and more new restaurants are opening new people also start their own businesses in the in the culinary industry so um the food industry is also something that is really interesting in dominica you can come and taste local dishes you know exotic dishes like lobster crabs different ways of cooking fish um even the hotels and the resorts they have actually understood that it's important to make your you know your recipes you know local friendly because yes it's okay to have you know this five star you know recipe book but then when you add a local flair to it whew. what's the vegetarian scene like is there are there um, options for vegan and vegetarians yes actually yes i'm glad that you brought that up um you know because as you know a lot of you know people living in the nature aisle you a lot of people are also health conscious and a lot of people also um you know co- practice the culture of uh, you know rastafari so um that that encourages a vegan you know lifestyle yeah. so we do have um restaurants have vegan options and vegetarian options and we actually have also have a few vegan and vegetarian restaurants that you can 
where you can go and get your food. So, Clem, I am so, so glad that we got to do this. And now you have actually put fuel under my oh. butt because now I'm <laughs> yes. going to work harder to get in there in Dominica. And thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge with us. And also for, of course, giving us so many tips and great mm -hmm. advice and, you know, where we should go and what we should mm -hmm. do. And yeah. and thank you for allowing me to share more about, you know, the, the, the love for life and the love that I have for this island uh, with your people. I am looking forward to everyone listening um traveling to dominica when you come please come find me and i'm also looking forward to you right so, i mean we're gonna have such a good time i'm gonna oh take you gosh. to all the beautiful spots I, uh depending on how much time we have oh my gosh you know what i'm actually thinking i don't think mm -hmm. dominica is one of those islands where you can come for four days there's just no. too that's too little time i'm gonna have yeah. to come for two two weeks yes yes definitely that i <laughs> think least. that is that is a good starting point if you have two two weeks oh my god yeah we're gonna have so much fun Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs> we repping the melanin. Black girl, shine girl with that melanin. Oh, you see my sister.